Are you ready for my winter dupes part two? Let's get started. Hi there, my name is Sandra and you're watching The Schwoben's Nest. Thanks for joining me today. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you could hit that red button. I saw this adorable Danish ski set on Wayfair. I think it's so cute, but they're asking $52 on sale. This is only about 14 inches high. So asking that kind of a price is just unbelievable to me. Let's make them for about three bucks. I'm starting off with these wooden garden stakes that I get at my local dollar store in the spring and summer. And when they're there, I stock up. There's usually 10 to a pack and they're a buck 25. So I'm going to use four all together and I'm using some wood glue to glue two of them together to make a more thicker and sturdier ski. You could use a painter stick for this, but I didn't want to because of the little indentations that they have. You could also use jumbo popsicle sticks, but I would suggest gluing a couple pieces together just to make it a little sturdier. I'm going to add some clamps on them just until they have a chance to set up. Usually about 10 minutes is all it takes for wood glue to get nice and sticky so it holds the two pieces together. It's been about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the clamps. And now I'm just taking these pliers that have a cutting mechanism on the inside. I don't know what they're called, but I'm just going to be trimming off the point at the very top here. I wanna get more of a rounded look. Then I'm gonna take my sanding block and really give this a good sanding all the way around the edges, all the way down. And I wanna round out that top really smooth. To create the little wooden poles, I'm going to be using two of these wooden dowels. You could also use bamboo skewers if you don't have small dowels like this. And then I'm going to take this cereal box board and just cut out four circles that are about the same size. I'm going to glue two of them together just to make it a little sturdier. You could use hot glue, but I thought a glue stick worked just fine. Now it's time to assemble the skis themselves. I'm just using some hot glue and forming an X shape and then putting them together. I've measured out the length that I want the ski poles to be and I'm using that same pliers to just trim them down. And I will sand down the cut edge a little bit just to make sure that it's nice and flat. In order to get the little cardboard piece on top of the dowels, I needed to cut out just a tiny little circle. So what I'm using is my craft knife and I'm just kind of scoring it a little bit and then I'll take some pointy little scissors and poke it through and make the hole big enough to fit the dowel. Keeping the design of the inspiration in mind, I'm always referring back to it to make sure I get it right. I'm going to start by painting the bottom tips of the skis with black. I can't tell if the picture is navy blue or black, but I decided to go with black because I don't have a lot of blue in my home. So I'm just going to be painting probably a good inch, maybe an inch and a quarter up from the bottom. And I'm going to make sure that I paint the back as well. I'll do the same thing for the top of the skis, but I'm going to go about two inches down and make sure that I give everything a really good coat, as straight a line as I can, just using my paintbrush. Of course, you could use some painter's tape if you wanted an exact perfect line. My adorable little ski poles also need a coat of black. The black paint that I get is from Walmart. I just get the gallon right off the shelf and it's flat black. Sometimes I add my talc to it to make it a little bit more opaque, but most of the time I use it straight from the can. For the white portion of the skis, I am using a chalk paint. This one is from Bear and it's available at the Home Depot. It's actually not bad. I think it's a really good quality in comparison to some other chalk paints, but I have to say my favorite chalk paint is always the Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint. It's super thick and it covers everything in one coat. I decided to take my black Sharpie marker and a ruler and create some straight lines right where the black and white paint meet. 
And then because the inspiration has a stripe, I'm going to just move my ruler down about a quarter of an inch and just draw a couple of lines as a stripe. And this is part of the uniqueness of these skis. I think the design is super cute. To add the snowflakes, I'm using a really fine point oil-based pen. I get these at Michael's, but you can find them at some dollar stores too, I believe. But I like it because it's oil-based and it has a little bit of more thickness to it. So it really gives a nice line. I'm starting out these little snowflakes by just drawing a circle in the center and then doing four lines north, south, east, west, and then I'm drawing some little ticks on them about halfway up the stick. Then I'm going to add some additional pieces, and I'm also going to do some little arrows on the ends of each of these. Now I know this is really hard to see, so I'm going to do the snowflake for you in a larger format. So you start just with a circle in the center, as I mentioned, and then you're going to do your lines up north, east, south, and west, and that will give you your starting point for the snowflake. Then you're going to go about halfway through and draw in some little stick lines that are coming out this way. You can see it's really easy to do. Once this is done, I'm going to draw in some little arrowheads on each of the original sticks that we did, color those in. After that, I'll add some additional lines just in between all of these lines, making them stick out almost as far as the first original ones. And then I'll give them some little ticks more towards the end of the stick, like you see me doing here. And I hope that tutorial helps you make some fun little snowflakes. Now it's time to add some greenery and some pine cones. I've got some frosted greenery here that was also from Michael's. I've also got some cedar branches that I have from Amazon and I spray painted them a little bit white so they have more of a snow look to them. I'm going to add these all together and then I'm going to be putting on my ski poles. And on top of that, I'll be adding a little bit more greenery and a couple of sweet little pine cones. You could use these just as decor standing up on a shelf, leaning against a wall, or on a tray somewhere, but I decided to just add a little black and white twine because that just gives me the option of hanging it somewhere. I really love how this one turned out and I hope you like it too. This is another beautiful piece for winter. It is very big, but I'm going to make a smaller version of it with some free printables that I found online. I found a long board in my stash. This was part of a drawer from a dresser, and I'm not going to paint it at all right now because when I paint this material white, it usually brings up a yellow tinge. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I found this beautiful printable on Pixabay and what I did was create it in a black and white version or more of a grayscale version. I know the one from the inspiration is hand painted and it does have a little bit of brown so you could definitely do some sepia tones or make it whatever color you want. I'll have the original and this grayscale one available on my website as a free printable. I'm just going to be cutting it down to size so it fits and then running my finger along the excess paper there and using my paper trimmer to make a nice clean line. I printed this out on my 
inkjet printer on regular printer paper so it would be nice and thick and you wouldn't see any of the wood coming through i'm going to be just piecing it together kind of like a puzzle putting it together and till it looks nice the way i like it switching some of the sheets around until i get the view that i'm happy with then i'm going to use a glue stick and just glue them down onto the board I decided to go and take some black paint and just paint all the edges of the wood that are showing with the black. I thought it just matched much better with the grayscale of the print and this project is done and it didn't really even cost me anything. Another sweet winter decor project that I thought I would make is this snowman that came from Wayfair. $78. I don't understand, but we're going to make this for way less. This is actually going to be a craft kit available on my Etsy shop. I designed this little snowman and then created his little hands and I'm going to add some little boots to him and his hat. The first thing I'm going to do is just take the base shape of the snowman and paint the whole thing white. I'm going to use some chalk paint and I'll give it a couple of good coats, including the back and the sides. I want to let you know that I have launched my Etsy shop. For those of you who have been with me for a long time, you know this already, but I wanted to just share that I will be doing a whole bunch of different craft kits. Right now I have some Christmas and seasonal ones, but I'll be adding some farmhouse decor shortly. I also have some vintage items and some of the decor that I make is also listed for sale. So make sure you check out my Etsy shop by using the link down in my description box. I'm going to continue painting. Everything else is getting a couple of coats of black paint. So the hat, the hands, and those two little semicircles there of wood, those will become his boots. Using my Cricut, I cut out a snowflake using some white vinyl. This will also be part of the craft kit along with the base piece. I've got a length of buffalo check or gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give this guy a little necktie. That's what it looks like in the photo. It's not a bow or anything so I'm going to just do my best at tying a little necktie and then I'll just straighten it out and get all of the lengths and everything figured out. This length of ribbon will also be part of the craft kit, so you'll get everything you need to create this cute little snowman. I'm using hot glue to glue all of these pieces together. I think if I was doing this as another craft kit, I would probably use something a little stronger for his hands, but the hot glue did hold out. You just have to hold it in place for a couple of minutes to make sure that it sets properly and that they're not too loose. Next, it's just gluing on the hat. I decided to cut the hat a little bit smaller. I just thought having that little outline of white would make it look a little bit more high end. Then I'll do the same for the little boots down at the bottom. I just think this gave it a little bit of an extra touch because this snowman doesn't have a face or any buttons or anything and I wanted to stay true to the inspiration. I'm going to leave this piece of wood this color that it is. It's actually a piece of cedar that I brought home from the cottage. It's already been varnished and I know it's kind of an orangey color but I like the contrast between the white and black and this piece of wood. So this wood will also be included as part of the craft kit. I think this snowman turned out super cute. What do you guys think? These natural linen snowflake placemats were available at Kirkland's. Now they're on sale for $28 and for a set of four, I think that's a pretty decent price, but I'm still gonna make them for less. 
So for this project, I'm just going to be using some drop cloth. I did pick this up at my local dollar store and it was $4 for three feet by six feet. I believe that was the sheet, but you can also get this at hardware stores and probably you can find something like this, maybe even at the thrift store. I'm measuring 18 inches wide and I'm going to do 12 inches deep or high or wide or whatever you want to call it. I'm using my fabric scissors to cut it out and what I'm doing here is just going about a half an inch outside the line because two of these edges are already hemmed in and two of them will be not and those are the ones that I am cutting now. So I want to have a little bit of extra space to be able to fold in those edges and give them a nice hem. I also like to use fabric scissors when I'm cutting material makes a huge difference on the clean cut. I'm going to be folding the edges in on themselves twice because that's how the original seam or hem is. So what I'm going to do is just fold it over once and then just crease it with my thumb. You can get a nice line with this. Really depends on the fabric that you're using though. You may need to press it and that will just really help to keep it in check when you're sewing. I am going to be using my sewing machine for this because I don't want to have two glued hems and two sewn hems. So now I'm just going to be folding it over twice like I sort of pressed it with my thumb and I'm going to use a straight stitch with some white thread and just stitch all the way down. Now my machine didn't really like this fabric at all because it's a very loose fabric and the threads are not tightly woven. So it did have a little bit of difficulty with the bobbin but I didn't worry about that because you really didn't see a whole lot of it anyway. I used my Cricut Explore 3 to cut out a pattern of snowflakes and some dots. I will have this available as a free printable. However, if you do this project, it would be better to not have this much waste on the vinyl. I didn't realize this until I started weeding and then thought, oh my gosh, I am wasting all of this vinyl, this big whole sheet just for some snowflakes. So what I would do next time is just not weld everything together as a group. I would create my pattern and then take my snowflakes and just line them up as well as the dots and then that wouldn't be as wasteful and then I'd be able to just cut each individual out and lay out my pattern on the placemat. I decided to use my Hippo mini heat press for this project. I love this little guy. He's not that expensive and it works really well. So what you can do is just turn the button on. You just press it and it will come on and when you press it again it will turn off. So what you do then is turn it on, press again, and then again, and you have three different heat settings. So you have blue, green, and pink. And I'm going to be putting it on the pink heat setting, which is the highest. And then I'll just wait for the flashing light to stop and it will beep when it's hot. When you're working with heat transfer vinyl, it's a good idea to press your fabric ahead of time. And I'm doing this while the heat press is still warming up. That's why you see the flashing button there, but it just needs to have all of the wrinkles and some of the moisture pulled out. So you're basically just drying it out a little bit. This is the pattern that I created and it is much easier to be able to lay your pattern down on your fabric and then use the heat press. But as I said earlier, I did waste a lot of the vinyl. So next time I'll be cutting out each individual snowflake and creating the pattern that way. Then I simply started to apply the heat press to each of the snowflakes and the dots with this thick plastic backing that is on the Cricut vinyl. It lifts off really well so you can see when your items are already attached to the fabric. I think it only took me about 10 to 15 seconds per item and I just kind of pulled up the plastic and if there was anything still stuck onto the plastic itself I just went over it with the heat press one more time.
I hope you enjoyed these winter high-end looks for less and got some inspiration to create some winter decor for your home. Don't forget to check out my Etsy shop and see if there's any crafting supplies or home decor pieces that you would like to purchase for your home. I'd love it if you could hit that like button that gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, that black arrow will point you in the right direction. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.